Thank you so much for joining us for CBN News. Watch MF from Graham Ahead today. As children go back to school, America is facing a shortage of a very necessary element in education. There aren't enough teachers in our classrooms. As an elementary principal back in the 90s, I would have um, 100 to 150 applicants for a kindergarten to second grade position. And I'm currently sitting at five. We'll look at what's behind this teacher shortage and what's being done to address it. Swamped, parts of Texas drenched in 15 inches of rain in just 24 hours. Caught people off guard, but I think everybody wasn't anticipating this much rain this fast. The city of Dallas experiencing its highest 24-hour rainfall total in 90 years. A growing number of Americans, especially millennials, losing their religion. So many of these people we had, they grew up in our children's ministries. They grew up in our youth groups. Somehow we missed them, man. We were unable to get them ready to, to live in the world that their life is playing out in now. And she was once homeless, an addict and a witch. Now she's a believer, reaching out to others with the gospel and strengthening believers. Jenny Weaver tells us about her new outreach. The core group is a mentorship for women. And my heart was to help women be equipped to do the ministry that Jesus has called us all to do. All those stories and more ahead today on CBN Newswatch. This is CBN Newswatch. I want to begin this half hour with one back to school item that is in short supply this year. Teachers, they are in short supply across the country. Low pay, overwork and the lingering effects of the pandemic are some of the reasons why school teachers are leaving the classroom. The shortfall is becoming a major crisis nationwide and school districts are taking extreme measures to fill the gap. Charlene Aaron brings us our top story. As the first day of class approaches, thousands of public schools are scrambling to fill vacant teaching positions. The teacher shortage is forcing many districts to make adjustments while offering unique incentives to attract educators. We're still recruiting as much as we can, but needless to say, when we're three weeks from the start of school, actually three weeks from today will be day two. When we're three weeks from the start of school, it's uh, it's time to start looking at some plan B options. Dr. Brian Austin of Chesapeake Public Schools in Virginia says his district is short some 60 teachers. We're seeing more retirements uh, than, frankly, we have incoming new hires the district looking to substitute teachers to fill the void. We may have some situations where uh, a sub that sub for us on a daily basis, we may need to pull some of them in in some long-term sub positions. The problem is nationwide, driven by the pandemic, burnout, low pay, and ever-increasing demands. As an elementary principal back in the 90s, I would have... Um, 100 to 150 applicants for a kindergarten to second grade position, and I'm currently sitting at five. As of today, we have 16 teaching openings for the upcoming year. Florida seeing as many as 9,500 open teaching positions just weeks before the start of school. Those leaving the classroom say the decision is hard. I was definitely very emotional about leaving the kids, um, but I just started to realize that I needed to do it for myself. According to the Economic Policy Institute, the problem only growing worse, predicting a nationwide shortfall of 300,000 teachers by 2024. Desperate school districts are turning to extraordinary measures. Des Moines Public Schools is offering a $50,000 bonus to teachers, nurses, and administrators who are nearing retirement to stay with the district through the 2022-2023 school year. Florida's Department of Education now offers a temporary teaching certificate to military veterans who have not yet earned their bachelor's degree. The Dallas Independent School District setting aside $51 million for salary increases and $52 million for retention bonuses for the new school year. Like many districts, Chesapeake is raising teacher pay. And our starting salary this year is $51,500. Uh, that's up from last year, starting salary of 47150 So we've made uh, teaching salaries a priority, and then also our classified staff uh, had a 14% raise. Chesapeake is also offering teachers the option to work virtually. We will open up our own virtual academy for our students in grades kindergarten all the way through through high school. We have teachers who absolutely thrive and loved teaching in a virtual setting. 
Meanwhile, the Department of Education hopes to use money from the American Rescue Plan to help fill vacant teacher positions around the country. Charlene Aaron, CBN News. Attorneys for former President Donald Trump have asked a federal judge to halt the FBI's review of the documents recovered from his Florida state earlier this month until a neutral special master can be appointed to inspect the records. The request comes as the New York Times reports the government has recovered more than 300 documents marked classified from Mar-a-Lago since President Trump left office, including more than 150 retrieved by National Archives in January, a number that helped to trigger the criminal investigation. The lawsuit calls the search a shockingly aggressive move. It attacks the search warrant as overly broad and contends that Trump is entitled to a more detailed description of the records seized from the home and argues the FBI and the Justice Department have long treated him unfairly. Also in political news, a new poll from NBC News gives a pretty clear look at how voters feel about President Biden heading, Biden heading into the midterms. The poll revealing three-fourths of the population think the country is headed in the wrong direction under President Biden's leadership. And 58 percent worry America's best years may already be behind us. This comes as Biden's approval rating remains below 50 percent, uh, 538, which which provides a weighted average approval rating from a number of polls, bringing him in this week at 40.6 percent. Turning now to an historic weather event unfolding in parts of the South and Southwest. Rains in Texas from droughts to flooding. Texas receiving 15 inches of rain in just 24 hours. Now the dangerous rain heading east. Our Caitlin Burke reports. It's being called a once in a thousand years event, a slow moving storm system dumping historic amounts of rain on areas that haven't seen substantial rainfall all summer. Caught people off guard, but I think everybody wasn't anticipating this much rain this fast. The deluge brought Dallas, Texas to a standstill Monday, forcing motorists to abandon their vehicles and get off the roads before being swept away by flash flooding. Sunday to Monday, the city experiencing its highest 24-hour rainfall totals in 90 years. Weather stations reporting more than a foot of rain across the Dallas area. The current's so strong going past my house, you, you, it'll wash you away. The rapidly increasing water levels left many in dangerous situations. The floodwaters sweeping up vehicles and dumping them blocks away, backing up traffic. Some neighborhoods with virtual rivers running through their streets. Rescue teams pulling families to safety. Other parts of the Southwest experienced the monsoon rains over the weekend. In New Mexico's Carlsbad Caverns National Park, about 150 people had to be evacuated after being stranded for hours due to impassable roads. Never been this close to a flood before, me neither. In Utah, rescue workers at Zion National Park are still looking for 29-year-old Jaytel Agni Hotri of Tucson, who was hiking when floodwaters swept through the area. I mean, it's frustrating. It's already day three for us, and we haven't found any clue except the backpack. As residents work to dry out, clean up, and survey the damage, more rain is in the forecast. AccuWeather predicting another round of flooding downpours across the south central states through Thursday. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. Coming up, a dramatic and important change is underway here in America as a growing number of people are losing their faith, no longer attending church or praying regularly. We're going to take a look at the signs of this tragic trend when we come back. More and more Americans are losing their religion, especially millennials. Daily prayer, church attendance, and the number of people who identify themselves as Christians are declining fast. CBN's Brody Carter explores why so many Christians are leaving the faith and what's being done to bring them back. If you John Steingard's faith journey reflects America's changing religious landscape. Once part of a Christian band, he's joined a burgeoning group that blurs the traditional lines of religious identification. I definitely don't think I literally believe in the God that most Christians would 
say that they believe in, but I'm not so convinced that Christian faith and practices is always a harmful thing. And he's not alone. Study after study shows Christianity is not the force it once was. That data haunts me. In 2021, Pew Research found self-identified Christians making up 63% of the U.S. population, a drop from 75% just 10 years ago. The majority of this decline is happening among Protestants, dropping 10 points in the last decade, while Catholicism remains relatively unchanged. During the same period, the group called Religious Nuns has steadily grown. When we ask people about their religious identification, are you Protestant, Catholic, Mormon, Orthodox Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Buddhist, Hindu, atheist, agnostic, something else or nothing in particular? The religious nuns are those people who answer that question by describing themselves as atheist or agnostic or as simply nothing in particular. In studying the secular shift, researcher Gregory Smith says he sees no sign of this trend slowing down. Religious nuns currently account for about three in 10 U.S. adults. That's, you know, triple, perhaps even getting close to quadruple the share who said that about three decades ago. Other indicators that Americans are growing less religious include prayer. Fewer than half of adults do so daily. 30% say they pray seldomly or not at all. Still, 4 in 10 say they consider religion to be very important in their lives. So many of these people we had, they grew up in our children's ministries. They grew up in our youth groups. Somehow we missed them, man. We were unable to get them ready to, to live in the world that their life is playing out in now. Renowned pastor, author, and church planter Matt Chandler says the church must see and accept this harsh reality before it can move forward. You've got the kingdom of God and, and you've got the kingdom of darkness. And, and really, I, I think what you're seeing is there, there was, I think, a collapse of robust discipleship uh, for an extended period of time. To better understand the reasons why someone would leave their faith, I talked with Steingart, former lead singer for Hawk Nelson, a Canadian Christian rock band. Anybody that leaves any religious community they have to figure out how to sort of hold themselves together and also how to make their way in the world. And that's actually not so easy. Steingart, whose father and father-in-law are both pastors, announced his decision on Instagram at the height of the pandemic. His announcement sent shockwaves through the Christian community. People like myself who decide to leave a faith tradition tend to be very focused on the negative aspects of that tradition when we leave, right? You know, like we, we tend to want to point out all the things that we think uh, are, are harmful or, or unfair or, you know, unjust. Steingard believes three major reasons people are currently leaving the church include differing beliefs on gay rights, failed support for social justice issues, and political platforms using faith to advance certain polarizing agendas. The church has to own that we really dropped the ball on discipling men and women for the world that they live in. Even the million or so kids that have left our church present a stunning opportunity for uh, innovation around evangelism, around reaching our neighbor. Chandler sees the rise of religious nuns as an opportunity to sow seeds of hope through his church planting ministry. To encourage support, he plans to fund each new church planter who partners with the Acts 29 network up to $50,000. Today, the network supports over 700 churches in 50 countries. I don't know what, who's watching this, what their heartbeat would be, but where you have a healthy local church made up of people who love Jesus Christ and, and know his word, darkness gets pushed back in a thousand different directions. It's not one big church that actually um, threatens the gates of hell. It's a thousand little lights in the darkness that kind of make up the brightness and the heat of the gospel. And so I want to be about pouring into that and giving my influence towards that, giving my time and energy and money towards that. Chandler and others remain undaunted by America's religious realignment. They still see fertile ground for outreach to nuns and others and for growth among professing believers through genuine Christian discipleship. Brody Carter, CBN News. Still ahead, she was once a homeless drug addict and a witch. Now Jenny Weaver is a worship leader ministering to thousands through her online ministry and helping them to transform their lives. We're going to hear about her new outreach that is spreading around the world right after this.
Welcome back to CBN News Watch. Worship leader Jenny Weaver ministers to thousands through her online and social media ministry. Once a homeless drug addict and a witch, Jenny is now a true worshiper and lover of God. Her heart is to lead people into an encounter with the Holy Spirit that will transform them as well. She recently launched a new outreach called The Core Group that is spreading globally. And she joined this week's The Prayer Link to talk about it. Take a look. You've been ministering to thousands through social media, but you recently started this new ministry called The Core Group. Tell us about it and the motivation behind it. Yeah, so The Core Group is a mentorship for women. And my heart was to help women be equipped to do the ministry that Jesus has called us all to do. And so when I went to church, I saw people going to church, but I didn't see many people doing the things that Jesus himself told us to do. Heal the sick, cast out devils, you know, go into the community and win the lost, spread the gospel. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to get a small amount of women and I'm going to pour into them. I'm going to pour everything that I have into them. I'm going to teach them and train them. And so that's where the motivation for the core group came from. Amen. And I love it. And we see the videos. It's powerful. I understand that there are core meetups happening everywhere across the country, even in the globe. How many groups are there right now? And do you think, why do you think this is resonating with so many women? Yeah, well, we started core meetups. It actually was very natural. I mean, it's just incredible if you were able to see this, how it all unfolded. It was all God. The women in the group began to naturally meet at each other's houses. And so I said, let me get a system together to begin to track all of these uh, these meetups that were happening. And I zoom in live to them and we have full out revival services in these homes. And so we started that at the end of April of this year, 2022. And we now have about 450 house groups that meet. Some of them are so large, uh, you know, 100 women in, in a house that we have to kind of find a different place for them. And so it is just incredible what God is doing. We have them in Australia. We have them in South Africa. We have them in the UK. We have them all over the globe. And I believe this is why it's resonating with, with them so much is because people are so used to just going to church, hearing a sermon, high-fiving their neighbor, walking out. But sometimes, and the same sometimes, because it's not all the time, sometimes there's no real actual transformation and change. Mm -hmm. And so in these groups, the women come in and they expect to meet with God. And so when they come in, there's deliverance that's happening. There's restoration that's happening. Women are crying and holding each other. They're forming lifelong kingdom relationships. And then they're going out on Saturdays together with these same group. And they're ministering to the community. They're going to Walmart. They're going to parks. And it is powerful. Jenny, what are some of the topics that you cover in these Zoom teachings? Well, right now we're covering um, a topic that the Lord gave me. He just drops things in me. And so I just go with it. And so the Lord said, uh, honorable women. And so I said, okay, God, what is that? And the Lord said, I want you to teach the daughters mm. how to walk worthy of the call. So right now I'm teaching a series on honorable women, how to, you know, shut down gossip. Come mm -hmm. on and hear some Come God. On. Come on. Um, how to, you know, to transition in and out of a ministry properly how to, you know, see these demonic things coming at our life and how to shut them down and walk honorably. I and it has it. been powerful. We've been using uh, Naomi and Ruth as examples. I also just taught on communion. And so mm. I gathered with the students. We were gathering every single day and we were taking communion live. And it wasn't just us taking communion like you would just see regular taking communion. It was us literally sitting there for an hour crying in the presence of the Lord, people trembling as we were taking communion. I wow. feel the Lord right now. Praise God. And I'm telling you, that that broke us into a whole nother place in God. And you can catch the prayer link this evening at 630 Eastern on the CBN News Channel. You can also find it by downloading the CBN News app. Coming up, a Minnesota farmer has some advice on how to live a long life, and he should know he is still working at age 105. We'll hear from him when we come back. Stay with us. Earl Mallingen knows a lot about farming and staying healthy. He just turned, get this, 105 years young, and he has some advice for everyone on how to live a long life.
Keep moving. Once you do, quit moving, you go downhill pretty fast. He says farming is a good business. It's exercise and fresh air, and you stay active. Nowadays, he has other things he's doing, the field work, but he still makes all the decisions from his farm in Minnesota while others are doing the field work. He says he's been blessed to have been a farmer. Another blessing, his large family, 60 grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And he has another important bit of wisdom to share as well. Be humble and with the help of God, you don't have to worry. You can don't sweat the small stuff. Faith in God and keeping active. That's some advice we can all benefit from. Time now for your Tuesday Tweetable. Today, I want to leave you with this thought and hope you will share it, post it, tagging others so that those who follow you can see it. It is not fun to wait. We know this, but it is something God calls us to do. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He promises to strengthen your heart while you wait. With this word, make this a terrific Tuesday and have yourself a wonderful rest of the week. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. Remember, you can always find more of our news programs on the CBN News Channel at any time, as well as online at CBNNews.com. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us at that address right there at the bottom of your screen, newswatch at CBN.com. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you right back here, same time tomorrow. Goodbye and God bless.